In this video, we are going to summarize Andrew Ng's new course, ChatGPT Prompt Engineering for Developers in 5 minutes. And I'm going to share with you my thoughts on the best practices of prompt engineering with Langchain and OpenAI API tricks and tips. Okay, let's get started. There are nine chapters with this course. We can organize them into three different parts. Part one is guidelines with two principles that I find really useful. Part two is the iterative development processing, which is quite simple. Part three shows you many of the capabilities such as summarizing, inferring, transforming, expanding, and finally building a chatbot. Let's first take a look at the two principles. Principle one is to write clear and specific instructions. Principle two is to give the model time to think. So there are four tactics associated with principle one. Tactic one is to use diminutors to indicate distinct parts of the input. For example, we can use three backticks to indicate the text we want to summarize. This helps better organize your input and also avoid prompt injections. Tactic two is to ask for structured output, for example, JSON or HTML, where you can read in the output with Python very easily. Tactic three is to ask the model to check whether the conditions are satisfied. If the text doesn't satisfy certain conditions, you can ask the model to return no steps provided in this example. Tactic four is few shot prompting. You can give your language model some examples and ask the model to answer in a consistent style. The second principle is to give the model time to think. This is actually how humans think, especially when we have a complicated task. Uh, we might not be able to come up with a solution directly. We might need step-by-step -step instructions. That's exactly what a tactic one is to specify the steps required to complete a task. We summarize and then translate the summary and then list each name in the summary and then we input the JSON object to get the final output we desire. It's also better to ask, the, ask for output in a specific format such as JSON. Now you can see the output is a JSON format. Tactic two is to instru instruct the model to work out its own solution before rushing to a conclusion. And in this example, we're asking if student's solution to a question is correct or not the model returns is correct. However, if we instruct the model to work out its own solution first with the following format, this is model's solution, and now it, when it checks with the student solution, it's not the same. So that's the two pr prompting principles. Principle one is to write clear and specific instructions, and principle two is to give the model time to think. Part two of this course is talking about iterative prompt development. Yeah, this is very similar to the coding, iterative coding process. You try something, analyze where the result doesn't give you what you want, clarify instructions, give more time to think, refine prompts with a batch of examples, and then repeat this process. In this example, we are trying to generate a marketing product description from a product fact sheet, the prompt to create a description. There are several issues with this answer. The first issue is the text is too long, so we can add this use at most 50 words. Issue two is text focuses on wrong details. In this case, we want to mention that the description is intended for certain audiences. And then issue three, description needs a table of dimensions. This is where we added more details and format everything in HTML. So that's the result here. So that's the gist of the iterative prompt development. As you can see, you just try something, and if there's an issue, then fix it, and then repeat this process over and over again until you are satisfied with your results. Part three of this course includes many examples of the following capabilities. So let's take a look at them one by one. The first capability is summarizing. You can simply say, summarize the summary below using the triple backticks in at most 30 words, and then you get a summary of the text. And then you can mention the focus in your prompt. You can also focus on price and value. And finally, if you have multiple reviews, you can list them in a list, and you can use a for loop to loop through all the text you want to summarize. So that's summarizing. Inferring is very useful. We can ask the language model to get the sentiment of the product review. We can ask the language model to only return either positive or negative. We can identify types of emotions. We can identify if the review express anger or not. 
and we can extract the item purchased by the reviewer in the company that made the item. And then we want to format it in a JSON format. And then we can do all of those tasks in one prompt. In foreign topics is very useful and interesting as well. Here we have a story. We want to infer five topics from the story and then we'll get the topics. So that's inferring. This is actually really, really useful. You, you don't need to train a model for a specific task anymore. You can just use ChatGPT to infer all the things without any training. The next capability is transforming. We can use large language models to do tasks like language translation, spelling and grammar check, tone adjustment, and format conversion. So the prompt is pretty simple. Translate the following English text to Spanish. You can also ask what language this is. You can translate the text to different languages, even English pirate. You can write a for loop to translate multiple messages in a list. Uh, tone transformation, also very simple. Just translate the following item from slang to a business letter. We can convert this Python dictionary from JSON to a HTML table. The next capability is expanding. In this example, we're generating customer service emails that are tailored to each customer's review. In the prompt, we're asking the language model to send an email replying to a valued customer. And then we give specific instructions. If it is positive, thank them. If it is negative, apologize and suggest that they can reach out to customer service. The final part is to build a chatbot. <laughs> I really like this part because they're using Panel, my favorite dashboarding app. I think they might have even read some of my blog posts. Yay! We're asking the language model to collect orders for a pizza restaurant. So we can say, I would like to order So in this panel app, we have a text input widget, which is this one. We have a, a button conversation widget, which is the chat button. And we bind this function, collect message, with the button conversation widget. So whenever we click chat, we're actually running the collect message function, which is this function right here. And then the dashboard is just organizing all the widgets and the conversation into a, a column panel.com. I have written many panel blog posts and made several panel videos. I'll link some resources in the description below. And then finally, we can format the previous food order into a JSON format like this. So yeah, so that's all the content for this course. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. I really like the guiding principles. But then there are some remaining issues that this course did not cover. For example, how do you deal with long tokens exceeding token limit? How to use language models with other tools? How to handle rate limits? And, and many more. So I want to talk a little bit about Langchain and also uh, some OpenAI tips and tricks from the OpenAI codebook. Okay, first of all, Langchain. A lot of times we don't want to write prompt from scratch. Langchain provides a lot of different useful prompts and it has amazing prompt templates for us to use. So check out the prompts page with Langchain. And what if your text exceeds your token limit? With Langchain, you can use MapReduce, Refine, and MapReRankChain to split your text into batches and feed each batch into your language model. And what if you want to keep all your histories in the chat? Langchain provides many different ways to deal with your chat history. And you can use many different tools such as Google search with your language model. And if you would like your prompt to automatically write other prompts and keep going, that is called autonomous agents. Langchain has implementations for baby AGI and auto GPT and others as well. Previously, I have made a 10 minute video summarize Langchain. If you're interested, please please watch my video. Finally, I would like to talk about the OpenAI cookbook. It has a lot of useful information there and some tricks I thought you should know. Yeah, there is a bunch of those. I'll just mention a few. Uh, first of all, how do you handle rate limits? One trick to avoid rate limit error is to retry with exponential backoff. Uh, this is a common practice, I guess. Here's an example. This decorator basically handles everything for you. Uh, you don't need to co hard code it yourself. Another issue, how to maximize throughput of batch processing given rate limits. 
uh, there are two ways. One, one is to add delay between requests. Here's an example. And another one is very important is batch requests because OpenAI API receives stuff in batches. Here's an example without batching. And we have an example with batching. You basically just need to have all your batches in the list and feed the listing to the prompt instead of a string to the prompt. And sometimes we might need to look into how to stream completions because if you're generating long completions, waiting for the response can take many seconds. So to do, uh, so to get a response sooner, you can stream the completion as it's being generated. So this will be faster. To do that, you simply need to set a stream equals true. So those are a few of the tricks and tips I want to mention. Please feel free to share other best practices of prompt engineering with me and I'd love to learn more. Thank you. Bye.